Now you can tell a lot about the body by the pH of your saliva and your urine. And you can get very inexpensively these little uh, pH strips right here. I don't know if you can see that right there. Oh, back here. Okay, there you go. So basically what you do is on the front here, you see you have the different pHs and you just like strip that off and you put it in your mouth and then you can match your pH to whatever it should be, okay? Same thing with the urine. Now, what you need to know is this. pH goes on a scale uh, from one to 14. Right in the middle is seven, that's neutral. So anything above seven is more alkaline and anything below seven is more acid. And the other thing you need to know is that when you're talking about body pH, you're talking about a lot of different pHs. And so when someone says, oh yeah, everyone needs to be more alkaline, you have to ask them what part of your body you're talking about. They're probably talking about the blood, okay? They're not talking about the stomach. So each tissue in your body has a different pH. And so the reason why I like measuring the urine and the saliva is that it's very easy. You don't have to withdraw blood. You just need to get one of these, which is only like $6 or maybe 10 bucks. And then you can check these things periodically to see what's going on. The other point I want to bring up is that this only gives you one little indicator or clue about what's going on with your body. There's a lot of other pieces of information you're going to align to that to see if you really have this thing. So just because your saliva or urine is too acid or too alkaline doesn't really give you the full picture or a really accurate diagnosis, but it can give you a clue of what's going on inside. All right, so the first thing we're going to start with is the urine pH, okay? So normally the pH of urine should be slightly acid. It should be between 4.8, okay, to 7.8. However, I would say an average around five to six, but it can go a little bit higher. Okay, so what is urine? Urine is filtered blood, okay? And your kidneys do a great job of recycling everything it can. It's very, very efficient. So it's gonna take proteins, it's gonna take vitamins, it's gonna take minerals, et cetera, and, and conserve them and pull them back in the body. But if you can just see what the pH of your urine is, you can get some pretty cool information about what's going on inside. So if your urine is too alkaline, okay, let's say it's an eight or a nine, it could be because you're drinking too much alkaline water. Some people have bought this machine to alkalize their water. And I've seen people with a urine pH of a nine by just drinking too much of this water. So that's like way, way out of range. It could be because you test yourself right after you ate. Okay. And that can also throw off the pH. So you don't want to check yourself right after you ate. It's best to do it uh, like two hours before you eat. However, if you're doing it right when you wake up, chances are your pH is going to be really, really, really acid. So you really don't want to assess this as the first catch, the urine catch of the day. So don't just check this right after a meal, check it like before a meal. Now, if it's too alkaline, it could mean that you're a vegan and you pretty much eat a lot of alkaline foods. Being too alkaline could also mean that you have an infection, okay, a bacterial infection, because this bacteria gives a byproduct of excessive ammonia, which is very, very alkaline. But just realize that because you're too alkaline, it doesn't mean you have an infection. I'm just listing all the potential things that can contribute to excessive alkalinity. Now, relationship to this condition called gout, if the pH of your urine is too alkaline and you have gout, you have an increased risk of releasing these uric acid crystals into your big toe. So you'd want to acidify your body to reduce the crystals. So you really, you can only have a gout attack if your urine pH is too alkaline. All right, next thing that can make your urine too alkaline is if you're on a diuretic, or if you are taking an acids, or it could be that you just vomited, that can make your pH change. And when we talk about kidney stones, for example, kidney stones tend to develop when you have alkaline urine. So if you keep your pH of your urine more acidic and you drink enough fluid, it majorly decreases the risk of getting a kidney stone. Because when your fluids are too alkaline, uh, calcium doesn't tend to mobilize. It tends to come out of solution and forms crystals. 
I mean, you may have seen this in your house. If you have well water, for example, or hard water, and you see these little calcium crystals uh, depositing on your faucet, that means that the water is alkaline and that calcium is coming out of the water and accumulating on your faucet. Now, one more thing about having excessively alkaline urine, that also exists when someone has kidney failure. All right, now let's shift gears. What happens if your urine pH is too acid? Now, remember, I'm talking about above the normal pH range of what uh, urine should be. So if it's too acid, it could mean that you're consuming too much meat, okay? It can also mean that you have uncontrolled diabetes. And that's because you might actually develop a condition called ketoacidosis because ketones are acid. Now, typically when you're on a ketogenic diet, you're not going to see a major um, excessive acid in the urine. But if you are on a ketogenic diet, plus you're doing fasting, especially prolonged fasting, you're probably going to see a very acidic urine. And that usually is nothing to worry about. Uh, that's normal. But some people might be concerned. And if you are concerned, you can just consume a little bit of baking soda, just a little bit, just to help neutralize that. But I wouldn't necessarily be concerned about that because you're going to eventually eat and then the pH is going to come back to normal. So fasting um, or even starvation can increase the acidity of your urine. Now you also see dehydration when you have an overly acidic urine situation. And lastly, um, if you check the first urine catch of the day, you're going to see uh, it being very, very acid. So I wouldn't worry about that, but I'm just letting you know that it's going to be excessively acid if you check your urine because all night long you are fasting. All right. So now you have a little more awareness on how to evaluate the pH of your urine. Okay. Now let's switch gears to the saliva. Now, normally the saliva should be not as acidic as the urine. It should be sl just slightly acidic or neutral, okay? So the normal range of saliva is between 6.2, okay, and 7.6. Now, one purpose of saliva is to help flush out the carbohydrates in your mouth and the acids that contribute to feeding bacteria, okay? Because the bacteria in your mouth love and live on sugar, and other carbohydrates. So the saliva that is constantly being produced is washing that out to limit the amount of food for your microbes. It's also eliminating some of the acids that are a byproduct of bacteria. Because when the bacteria and yeast ferment sugar and carbohydrates, they produce like lactic acid and other acids that can then cause decay. So that's one purpose. And the other purpose is to help buffer the acids, because in the saliva, you actually have uh, alkalizers that help buffer the acid. There's also a lot of other things in saliva. You have enzymes to help break down carbohydrates. And I also will put another video down below talking a little bit more about saliva if you're interested. All right, so if you take this right here and you check the pH of your saliva and it's too alkaline, okay? That means the pH is going too high. That could mean you have too much bacteria in your mouth. And when the pH is excessively alkaline in your mouth, you are at risk for getting tartar. And tartar is more of a advanced uh, dental plaque situation. It's crystals building up because you have number one, bacteria, and number two, your pH is alkaline. So remember when I talked about calcium um, kind of coming out of solution when you're too alkaline? same thing applies here. So you're getting calcium deposits on your teeth. You get calcium deposits in your kidney as kidney stones, and you can get calcium deposits in your joints as arthritis or calcium deposits in your heart as placking. So calcium deposits have a lot to do with pH. And by the way, if your blood is excessively alkaline, uh, you might have a tendency to get uh, tetany. That's like a little twitching, twitching or a muscle cramps. Whereas if your blood is too acid, that is going to affect your energy level. You're going to be tired and it's also going to affect your breathing. However, I don't want to get into the blood pH because that is very, very difficult to test. All right, so let's get back on topic. And by the way, the bacteria use this calcium to protect themselves 
against extremes in pH. So if your urine is too alkaline, um, that bacteria can still survive. So bacteria doesn't like extremes. It will live in a certain pH, but it tries to survive by doing things to protect itself. All right, so the next thing that occurs with an excessively alkaline saliva is gingivitis. So gingivitis is a mild form of periodontitis, which is inflammation around your gums. And so if you have tartar that's accumulating in your teeth, that is just underneath the gums, that's going to create inflammation, but a mild form of inflammation in your gums, it's called gingivitis. So now what about if the pH of your mouth is too acidic? What does that give us some information about? Well, it could tell us that you're eating way too much sugar because bacteria also can thrive when the pH of your mouth is too acidic and you're feeding your bacteria sugar. So if you're doing a lot of carbohydrates or you're, I don't know, chewing a lot of sugary gum or you're chewing candy that's sticky or you drink uh, sodas or you drink a lot of juice, all that sugar is going to feed the bacteria and then the byproduct from that is going to be a lot of acids. And then all that acid is then going to cause uh, demineralization. The calcium from your teeth is going to leach out. And that is what we call a cavity. So if you have kids, for example, you should be using this to check their pH and educate them about what that means. You can just tell them like, wow, your pH is too acid because you're feeding your bacteria in your mouth all this sugar, and that's going to lead to a cavity. So that might motivate them to stop eating sugar. Now, if your pH is too acid, you might have uh, chronic halitosis because of the bacterial connection. They produce excessive certain gases, and you might have more of a severe infection in your gums. That's called periodontitis. So with excessive alkalinity and excessive acidity in your saliva, you can have bacteria. All right, so now the big question, what do you do to correct the extremes in pHs, whether something is too alkaline or too acid? Now, there are a lot of videos I've done on maybe taking apple cider vinegar or eating certain things to bring the pH back, but ultimately the, the best thing you can do is just to focus on eating healthily, okay? And what does that mean? Well, for that information, I'm going to send you to another video, but by eating correctly, that is going to be your best bet to correct the different pHs that occur at the different places in your body versus doing other things to try to like patch up this problem. So for what to eat, this is the video that you need to watch next.